as if to warn him. Do you think I want you to forget it? I don't. I liked the old Eliza, but I like the new one better, the one who speaks her mind, who doesn't let anyone push her around. If Sam had returned from the war, I dare say you would have run him a merry dance. <laughs> I like to think so, she said, then flashed him a tentative smile. And I hope you're running your father a merry dance too. To be honest, Papa tries to get my attention from time to time, but I've mostly been ignoring him. After he pursued the divorce proceedings so vigorously with Mama, laying waste to our lives, I couldn't find it in my heart to forgive him. I'd had enough of his behavior. I can understand that, and you have every right to. Something caught the corner of Nathaniel's eye. Um, is that your sister hurrying up the path toward us? Eliza followed his gaze and groaned. I'm afraid it is, and that likely means our private interlude is over. Chapter 12 I'd been looking for you everywhere, Verity said to Eliza as she came within hearing range. Where the devil have you two been? Viewing the grounds, Nathaniel said, as if he were used to lying to cover up bad behavior, which he probably was. I've never visited here, so I asked Eliza to show me about. Verity rolled her eyes and fell into step with them. <laughs> A likely story. Judging from Eliza's wilted flowers, you've been doing something entirely different. Well, you may not realize this, sir, but my sister has other duties, so pray do not keep her from them. I would never, he began. What's wrong? Eliza asked sharply, knowing that Verity would never be so rude under normal circumstances. You remember that blasted singer you didn't want to hire, whom I insisted upon us hiring? Eliza knew exactly where this was leading. Your opera singer friend. Yes, she sighed. I confess I was wrong about her. She was supposed to arrive around the time you did, but she didn't. Just now, I received a message from her saying she couldn't come. She gave no excuse and no apology. Panic rose in Verity's voice. As you are well aware, she's scheduled to sing Venite in Gino Ciatevi in an hour. Do you know it? I've heard it, but never sung it. Fortunately, I know and have sung How Pleasant the Banks many a time, which is perfectly apt for May Day, and the orchestra I hired has played it for me too. I also uh, made sure they had their music with them for that, and a few other songs in my repertoire. I can give a veritable concert if I must. Verity winced. You knew she wouldn't show up, didn't you? Believe me, I would much have preferred she came, but some singers have a reputation for unreliability, so it's best to be prepared. I was hoping to help her improve her reputation, Verity said, but I see she comes by it honestly. Perhaps next time you should leave the music decisions to Eliza, Nathaniel put in. Eliza shot him a quelling look. The man didn't even know he was playing with fire. And perhaps next time, sir, you should keep your opinions to yourself, Verity snapped. After all, you did hire us to make the decisions concerning the parties that your ward attends. Why, you're not even supposed to be here. Verity, stop that, Eliza said. He's just trying to... to... point out my mistakes. Thank you, but I already have you and Diana for that. Besides, what he's actually trying to do is get you into his bed and you're helping. Nathaniel began to cough, obviously attempting not to laugh. <clears throat> Perhaps I should uh, just stay, Verity turned to point her finger at him. Do not accompany us any farther. We need Eliza to focus on singing, and she turns all sappy and distracted when you're around. Nathaniel blinked, clearly not used to being told what to do by the likes of Verity. May I ask one question before I'm summarily dismissed? Verity let out a frustrated breath. 
What is it? When and where will Eliza be singing? Because I don't want to miss that. Eliza choked down a laugh. For once, Nathaniel's refusal to take things seriously was rather amusing. Verity clearly didn't see it that way. Shooting him a dirty look, she grabbed Eliza's arm and began marching down the path, dragging Eliza as she went. I sing in an hour by the big tent, Eliza called over her shoulder. Now stop following us so Verity will stop yanking my arm out of its socket. He must have halted because she could hear nothing more from behind them. Verity released her. Sorry, she mumbled. I always forget you have short legs. Believe me, I'm well aware that you forget, Eliza said. You and Diana with your long strides, you leave me in the dust. Eliza frowned at Verity. And I don't get sappy when I'm around Lord Foxstead. I certainly don't get distracted. That's ludicrous. Yes, you do. What does that even mean, sappy and distracted? Verity folded her hands together over her breasts. Oh, Lord Foxstead, do you really think I sing like an angel? Shall I sing for you now instead of helping my sisters? Shall I sit in your lap whilst I do so? Eliza struggled not to laugh. It would only encourage her mouthy sister. I have never used the word whilst in my life. Nor have I ever sat in Nathaniel's, in Lord Foxstead's, but she had less than an hour ago. You're just being ridiculous, and I don't sound like that, all syrupy and silly. Oh, look, Diana's coming, Verity said. Let's see what she says about you getting all sappy and distracted. You found her, Diana exclaimed as she neared them. Thank heavens. Wait, Eliza said. Where's Jocelyn? Is no one chaperoning her? Lady Crowder is with her, as is Geoffrey. Jocelyn's holding court with the soldiers. Apparently, there are more than two here, regaling them with tales of life in the army as a girl and then a woman. And they're listening, Eliza said. I would never have expected Jocelyn to regale anyone with stories. Apparently, all it took was finding some army people to bring her out of her shell. It seems nearly Charlie's entire company of hussars is here. Diana had turned to walk on Eliza's other side. She'd slowed her strides a bit lately, now that she practically had to waddle everywhere. So don't worry about Jocelyn. It's the orchestra leader you need to worry about. Last I saw him, he looked a wreck. He's not a terribly hardy character, is he? You know these musical sorts, Eliza said. Very dramatic. I'll soothe him. It will be fine. She cast Verity a pointed glance. I'll sit in his lap, Verity. What do you think? As Verity's eyes shot daggers at her, Diana drawled. That's a bit extreme. Plus, he's Papa's age and much pudgier. Although I suppose that means his lap would be soft. Why are we talking about laps, anyway? Eliza sniffed. Verity thinks I get all sappy and distracted around Lord Foxstead. Verity is jealous, because anyone can see he's fond of you, and she wishes she had someone herself. I do not. Verity crossed her arms over her chest in a most unladylike fashion. And I'm not jealous. If she's fool enough to fall for a rake hell, I don't give a farthing. I don't accuse you of being sappy around Geoffrey, do I? Even though you are. She looked over at Diana. When I found Eliza, she was alone with Lord Foxstead and looking a bit disheveled. Diana burst into laughter. <laughs> I would be surprised if she wasn't. First of all, Eliza isn't some naive thing like Jocelyn. Second, she can handle herself and any man perfectly well. Yes, that's what I'm afraid of, Verity said. She's been handling him, if you know what I mean. Diana shot her a stern look. Third, it's none of our concern. Leave her be. 
Widows of a certain age can, well, indulge in such activities as long as they're discreet and no one sees it going on. When Verity opened her mouth as if to answer, Diana added, You seeing it doesn't count. Happy to hear I've reached the advanced age to do as I please, Eliza said wryly. You know what I mean, Diana said. You are being discreet, aren't you? I'm trying. It's a bit difficult around you two. And I don't think Verity is jealous. I think she's afraid she'll be left alone to run elegant occasions. Nonsense, Diana said. She has Rosie, and I still have my hand in. I'm sure you will too, if you should happen to marry Lord Foxstead. I'm not marrying Lord Foxstead. Eliza was fairly certain of that. So there's nothing for you to worry about, Verity. Verity increased her pace. This is absurd. I'm not jealous, and I'm not worried about anything unless it's Eliza getting hurt. Now, if you two will excuse me, I'm going to run ahead of you dawdlers and reassure the orchestra leader that help is on the way. Without being impeded by short legs or a pregnant belly, Verity quickly left them behind. She generally enjoys talking about how she's feeling more than anyone I know, Diana told Eliza. Unlike Lord Foxstead, who'd rather chew off his tongue than speak of his feelings. She looked at her sister. Did you realize he was a legend? I didn't. Geoffrey was shocked. <laughs> Just now when I left him, he was questioning the soldiers about it, who were assuring him it was true. Geoffrey has always assumed the man was only a legend in terms of his bedchamber exploits. I confess I thought the same thing until today. Eliza kept to herself Nathaniel's assertion that he'd been celibate since his return. She wanted to believe him, but after Samuel. Samuel had affected her thinking in far too many ways, unfortunately. She found it hard to trust men.